Hi guys and welcome to the third instalment of Choice of the Deathless on Mr and Mrs Gamer. You are here with Mrs Gamer, obviously. And today we are starting off from the end of chapter one, beginning with the interlude. And um, if you've watched the other videos, you'll know that this is a text-based choose your own adventure game that I found on Steam. The demo is free and that's what we're playing at the minute. And um, for the full game, it's $2.99. Not sure what that is in pounds, but it's probably not very expensive. Um, well, without further ado, I'll get into narrating this for you, and I um, hope you enjoy it. Interlude. Broken. The image slips and fades, but the blood remains. You are more than you were, or at least you remember more than you once remembered. You're still falling, in pieces, in this darkness from which you cannot return. More sparks and slivers of falling memory tumble around you. You grope still for memories, for changes. You pass your first year at the firm. L little decisions altered your world day by day. What changes do you grab out of the cascading broken mirrors? You can, at this point, change your apartment change how much you are saving, you can pay off your student loans, or you can change nothing. I'm pretty happy with the choices that I made, so I'm gonna not change anything. And so you reach for another shard of your spinning mind Another reflection of a screaming face you barely recognise as your own. You stand in a dark room inside a glowing pentacle and hold a knife of lightning to your wrist. Somewhere a clock strikes midnight. It's time to work, as always. You press the knife point into your skin. A drop of blood wells up. You pull the blade away and the blood drop falls round and reflective to the floor and when it splashes there you fall too you fall into the world of gods the material realm breaks around you and for a moment you feel yourself a gnat passing through a beam of light revealed to enormous beings who normally would not notice something so small but in this instant of exposure they might well reach out and destroy you for their own amusement or only to pass the time. You leave the light and find your destination. You hover before a wall woven by spiders out of silver webs. Most of the patterns are abstract, but a few resemble faces, the faces of people you know, screaming. This has been the last three months of your life. Transdimensional thaumaturgics. Your client contracted with the demonic consortium of Akarath to build an enormous hydro project in the southern Catholic jungle. The demons then claimed the project was much as their property as TTs, which would give them a foothold in your world, a territory through which they could pass at will from their reality to yours, unlimited by the bonds of a summoning contract. They would stride across the earth like gods. Obviously, this is a bad outcome. You've been tasked with document review and minor ward maintenance. How have you been handling these responsibilities? And you have four choices you could pick. The first is you could work late every day on your own. You could search for patterns in the demon's strategy, trying to work smarter. You could create an elaborate piece of craft to do most of the work for you. Or you could work in a team with your colleagues. Now, 
I think I'm going to go for option two, searching for patterns in the demon's strategy, trying to work smarter. The demons have been exploiting the contract in a predictable pattern, pressing against flaws in the definition of ownership. You think you understand their strategy, but as yet, they've made little progress. You spend hours combing through the contract wall, comparing it point by point to the written descriptions of the deal transdimensional thaumaturgates offered you. This is a bigger version of the classic summoning contract, in the same way a container ship is a bigger fishing boat. The principle's the same, at least. Demons hail from a realm parallel to your own. Local laws of physics don't bind them. When offering demons a path into your own reality, a good summoner can define their powers to exceed those of most humans. But if demons could pass into your world without a clear contract, they would lack limits. Singularity is a possibility striding unrestrained across continents, and singularities are bad. A few demons were unleashed back during the God Wars, and the world still shudders from the consequences. So you review the deal again, and again. And at three o'clock in the morning, you say the words no one connected with the craft ever wants to say, or hear. Huh, that's funny. You barely trust your own eyes. Fortunately, you have another pair to hand. Cass Chen is also working late. Hey, Cass, can you take a look at this? She flies over from her portion of the wall. These last few months haven't worn well on Cass. She has dark circles under her eyes and her face looks strained. What's the problem? You show her. There's a hole in the wall. A tiny hole, but demons don't need much room to wriggle through. We need to tell someone about this, she says. You nod and rise into the real world. You stumble back into your own skin. Flesh fits tight after freedom and your wrists hurt like hell. Mouth dry, world whirling, you turn for the door. Have to grope twice in the dark to find the handle. You wander down the ghost lit hallway outside, looking for someone, anyone, Soon you find Vega, Halcon Vega, the altruist. Elegant, tall, slim, dark-eyed and vicious. Lately of counsel and a rapid climber in the firm. He is in charge of the warding project, among other things. He seems shaken, perhaps by the look on your face. What's happened? And you get four choices here. You can, say, you can either say, I found something, as in take the credit. We found something, so you share the credit with you and your friend. You can lie and say nothing's wrong, or you can ask the guy what's wrong with him. I think I'm gonna go with the first option. I found something, because technically I did find it. Remember earlier how <laughs> How we told you the first part of Choice of the Deathless is available for free. This is the end of the free content. To find out what happens next, please purchase the remaining chapters. Okay guys, so that is the end of the demo version of Choice of the Deathless. It did end in a cliffhanger, which kind of makes me want to see what's going to happen next. But um, I guess I'll walk you through some of the other features that I saw in the free demo version. This, you, there's a tab up here to show you the stats of the game. And as you can see, there's loads of different things here. There's charm, which I'm currently working on 38%, uh, it's not bad. My craft, so how good I am with my magic is 40%. My cutting is 46, determination 35. Sleep's doing quite good. And I'm more in it for myself than 
for the people at the minute, that's what this one means. Gunner and socialite. I guess these, um, the names down here, they could mean how much these people like being in your presence, how much they're on your side. Um, there's a little guide down here at the bottom. So it's quite a nice little feature, I think. Just adds a little something extra to the game. And there's achievements that you can get. Although they're not Steam achievements, um, they're still pretty nice when they pop up down there. So anyway, this is going to be the end of the walkthrough for this game, unless you guys want us to purchase the full game and continue. If you do want us to do that, please just leave a comment um, under the video and we'll see what we can do about that. Please stay tuned for other content, um, more will be coming soon. And thank you for watching, bye guys!